All right, it is time to start assembling the engine for the wagon. And I am now, I knew that it was gonna be a big deal to sell my old engine to Cletus because it is, it is not just as easy as some people might think. Oh, all you do is go to the shelf and you take off all the parts and you put it all together. It is not even close. All right, so, and this is my own personal engine. This is the one I designed and developed and machine out of a block of aluminum and it is still not every single one of these is a lot of fit and finish hand stuff that just needs to be done and then especially with this block because this is one of the first ones that came off of Tom Bailey's machine and I got approximately this is one I had to fix the lifter bores in uh, a couple other little things and now I fit they have to fit the plates to it um, all things said and done I probably got Probably have a grand total of 30 to 40 hours just in re, re in fixing little stuff in the block. But that's all right. I mean, that's how things go. Um, so anyways, I'll come over here and I'll start showing you some stuff. Like I said, uh, I'm going to just do some time lapse on this. I'm going to show you how things are put together, but I might as well talk about it real quick. MGP aluminum rods. Uh, these are our piston and ring package. Uses a tool steel top ring. This, if you don't know, this is a pin button, and that is to go in there. It fills that hole. If you want to see me talk about this a little bit more, uh, you can go to one of my Steve Tech videos or any of the piston videos. But this supports the oil rail because the piston pin is all the way up here. So instead of having locks in there, because the locks can do and may start coming out especially if you miss the tune up on it they will come out guarantee if you miss the tune up on these things they'll come out and sometimes i think they just come out because they make too much horsepower and so we have buttons mgp rods obviously the billet crankshaft i'll talk about the camshaft a little bit and some of the other stuff here as we go along but i've already gapped rings i've already done all the uh clearances in the mains uh or actually cody's doing clearancing on mains already done clearancing on the connecting rod did the ring gaps already so it is ready to start assembly uh, and after, especially I got to modify my plates and stuff for the water plates on the inside so let's get at it So everything all cleared, that's sweet. Uh, all of them did. My cam tunnel's done, my main tunnel's done. All right, so we're in the middle of the mad thrash of getting everything all done for the wagon. So I'm gonna be working on the uh, short block. Uh, Cody's got bearing clearances all checked and done. So uh, block is all clean. I think we just have to do a little bit of mock-up. Forgot about that, we gotta do mock-up for uh, push ride clearance. So we're not going to assemble the heads just yet so uh, black is all done thought I would show you some interesting stuff because uh, people want to know uh, why why engines cost so much money I'm gonna show you some stuff so I got everything all laid out here just have to gap rings have to do a little bit of connecting rod clearance uh, for piston the piston uh, pin end and cylinder head so I have everything laid out here is making sure that I have everything all done this is 
interesting here to you. You see this stuff right here? Rocker arms, rocker arm stands, push rods. There's about $8,500 worth of rocker arms and push rods right here. Valves. Uh, between the valves, uh, springs, retainers, keepers, titanium, victory. I mean, you're a hundred and I think it's 145 or 100 and about 145 dollars a piece for each valve. Uh, and then springs, retainer, keepers, everything we got there, it just keeps on going and going. It's astronomically expensive. The camshafts are tool steel. 65 millimeter. That there is a, ouch. That there is sharp too on that load. But uh, that there is a man's camshaft. Anyways, uh, super cool stuff. So we're just going to, uh, I'm gonna be working on putting the, the short block together. Uh, we are going to mock this up real quickly, make sure that I have push ride clearance because uh, there's a couple little spots that I always have to do to make sure that that's correct. These are the heads for the wagon and so this one has been this one is all done and we've lapped in it just to make sure that the valve job is correct we have the hoops in guides are in the big exhaust guide the custom exhaust guide we make here is is all done also so that's cool this head just needs to be lapped up so Cody why don't you go ahead lap, uh, I see you're already starting it so just go ahead and finish lapping this up and just want to mock up mock assemble these things first make sure the guides are good make sure the valve job is good if everything is all good start putting stuff together
see in here is, and I've showed this a couple times now, this is the rollerized thrust bearing assembly. That is a cage that goes around the outside, and this is the Torrington bearing that goes inside. So you set the thrust up so it does not use the rear portion of the thrust on the uh, stock thrust bearing, but it would only use the forward piece of the thrust bearing, stock thrust bearing. All load going this direction is handled by this thrust bearing, rollerized thrust bearing. So I'm just setting up the clearances and getting that all set up correctly. So I checked where it was uh, with the stock thrust, which was 10,000, so I'll set this thing up so it only has seven. Once I know that it only has seven, I know that it's three thousandths. Uh, it's pushing it backwards three thousandths and making it rely on this Torrington bearing. Now what I'm gonna do is, this is too thick. It's trying to push the crankshaft right back through the bearing. It won't even go on, so I'm gonna take this over to the lathe and I end up turning the back side of it down until I get, which rides on the crankshaft only, doesn't touch the block. And I'll keep turning that checking it, turn it, checking it, turn it, until I get the clearance that I want, that I need out of the thrust. Okay, now you can see we have our rotating assembly in. I'm gonna roll that engine over. Right on. There you can see. Now, and I have the oil pump plate on. I have the thrust in and on and correct. Now we'll put it all the the uh, camshaft and uh, all the front gear drive on. Now, if you'd like to learn how to degree cam, I'm not going to go through the whole process here. I showed you the whole process, but I'm not going to show you or uh, go through the whole thing. Go up here, click the link, or you can go to uh, uh, my Steve Tech videos on YouTube and camshaft, how to degree a camshaft. Or actually, you can even just uh, Google Steve Morris camshaft degree and uh, my video will come up. Give you a good detailed explanation of exactly what was going on there.
complete short block with complete front and cam. This is for fuel pump drive and uh, the uh, fuel pump extension. I'll show you that. So this is the fuel pump extension right here. And my fuel pump clamps on there. This bolts into the uh, front cover. So let's uh, keep on trucking on. So, what you can see here now is we have the cylinder heads on, everything's all torqued up. It's a little bit of a process. You see the inside head bolt holes right in here, or the head studs, half inch head stud, that's not common. Uh, it goes right through the intake port. It's my little finger in there. And goes all the way through. And so what I'm doing is I'm clamping this in all together and then tightening up all the bolts here on both plates to get everything sealed up. So now we are just machining up the plugs for the top of the runners right here. And then we'll start putting uh, the valve train assembly on. So we are getting there. And by the way, so, so far uh, you're watching this and you're watching it through time lapse. You think I probably did this in a day. All things said and done now I'm at two days into getting this together for the first time. There's two sets of lines, so I was making the lines, lines that would cross over to give oil pressure because this is, uh, see this, uh, nope, this one here gets fed off the main oil galley. This one, the only way that this lifter galley gets fed is by this lifter galley. So you'll see that I have two crossover tubes to balance out oil and feed that passage. some kind of sound over like of something sexy and I'll try to get this thing to, to roll over really smooth
All right, super long time. Uh, a lot of struggles with the new block, but here it is, ready to go into the wagon. Come back tomorrow, we're gonna shoot the thing and uh, get this thing in the car and hopefully things go better. I'm Steve Morris, have a great day.